So now let's have a look um, how a reverb actually is working. So the basic idea behind this is that you try to just model a room. Because if you have a look here on that image, you can see this is a big room and we say, okay, let's have a random sound source here and at another random position, a listener. And if the sound source starts making some noise, um, the listener will not hear only the direct sound from the sound source. The listener will also hear indirect sound, which is reflected through the walls of this room. For example, over this path here or over this path here, going back to the wall and then to the listener or coming here from the other side. And basically all that audio paths through the room and reflections of the walls are introducing like different delays and also different filter characteristics. And everything is like mixed up together here at the listener position. The idea basically how to model this now in digital, um, there was a concept which was originally from Manfred Schröter. I will also show the picture of him here in the upper right edge. Um, he found basically out how this works or how to model this. And he had the idea of just putting together here four different COM filters, which are uh, running all in parallel. Then in the end, summing the signal up together and then running the signal also once again through uh, different all pass filters. In his original setup, he had like different gains and the gains all must be uh, below one because then you face a problem that you will run into instability of the filters and also with the delay times. Um, basically, um, the concept of Manfred Schröder only had like fixed delay times. In my implementation, I used them as a starting point, but um, I have like one variable where I can modify this delay of um, all the seven filters here by uh, by a same scaling factor. Now let's have a quick look how a COM filler is working. This is this construct here. You just have an audio input source. Um, you got a delay, which is uh, um, determined by this delay value here, for example, then feeding back the signal through gain stage. This is the gain you can see here, summing up together once again. And uh, what is coming out of the delay is basically fed out of the COM filter. And an all pass filter is basically more or less the same as a COM filter, but with a single difference that you also have like a feed forward path here. And yeah, what I have shown you here is basically uh, the reverb algorithm from Schröder itself. But in the end, if you have like a mixing console or stuff like this, you usually can select a dry or a wet value. And this is basically implemented this way that you have like also a feed forward path directly from the audio source, which is summed together here with a reverb signal and you get like a factor of 0 0.3 for the wet factor. And then you have like a factor of 0 0.7 for the dry factor and this summed up together and uh, sent to the audio output. So now let's have a look what I have implemented in the um, firmware for the SCN32. So everything begins with our standard code, uh, which I have used already in the last three videos. And then I'm starting here with um, defining the length of the buffers. So originally, uh, Manfred Schröder was using a sampling rate of 25 kilohertz and I was just using the delay values out of the block diagram I have shown to you and calculated it into a sample count for 96 kilohertz. So then I'm just coming here to this value, to this value, to this value and so on. And then basically I tried out to extend the delay of the reverb and so therefore I tried out, okay, how much uh, sample buffers are fitting into the STM32's RAM. Um, yeah, the problem is basically that I don't have an external SD RAM on the STM32, so I'm a little bit limited. And then I tried out to just to make a multiplication factor here of two. So this is still fitting the STM32F407, but having a multiplicator of three already doesn't fit in anymore into the RAM. So here on the next point, I'm defining here my uh, wet variable where you can control the feed forward against the reverb algorithm, but I have shown you in the block diagram. Um, I just set this to um, 0.5. And here at this point, I'm, uh, I can uh, set up the delay time. 
So 1.0 means using the maximum size out of the delay buffers and then scaling down to zero linearly also scales the upper limit for the um, manipulation pointer of those audio buffers here. Yeah, then basically I'm just defining here my um, uh, limiters for the pointer, which is basically just derived from that time factor here. Then I'm defining here my seven buffers, like four buffers for the comp filters and three buffers for the um, all pass filters. And then I have here all my gain factors. So the upper for the gain factors, the comp filters here, the gain factors for the all pass filters. And then I have here like uh, the pointers for all my buffers. Now you can see here I have implemented four functions. I mean, there are for sure ways um, how to implement it more efficiently, but I really want to show you on a basic way how you can implement it. So what you can see here in this implementation of a do confiler is basically exactly the structure I have shown you on the block diagram. And also here, like with the do all pass function is also the same I have shown you on the uh, block diagram. If you want to, you can just download the code on GitHub and study yourself more in detail. Then in the end, I just uh, did a function here, which is called do reverb. And basically we are just generating here a new sample, which is basically the sum out of the four comp filters um, divided by four, because you're summing up four times the same amount of energy and then you have to come down with your energy level somehow, and then applying the sample to the three um, all pass filters here. And this is basically all more or less. So you see the code is not that complicated. Here in the main function, you see once again, um, the uh, limiters for the uh, read and write pointers, they are der uh, derived here from the time factor by the length of the uh, buffer sizes here. And yeah, basically this is uh, once again our interrupt function here. Sample is coming from here. It is the sum together to mono signal. Then we are applying here our do reverb function doing that uh, wet dry calculation and feeding that signal back to the output buffer. And I would say now let's hear some audio samples how it sounds. Yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching also this video. I hope you liked it. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure anymore if I want to make another video now on um, audio processing on STM32. Um, let's see. But I think there are also a lot of other very interesting topics around there regarding audio, like there are open topics on class D amplifiers or like on Bluetooth audio stream, what I thought, which is also quite interesting. But let's see and see you next time.